In the NBA, there is arguably more pressure on the top picks in the draft than any other sport when it comes to the expectations of these young players to start performing at a high level quickly. If you're a top 5 pick or a lottery pick, the expectation is obviously that you should prove to be one of the best players from that draft class. And while everybody develops at their own rate, the players do still need to perform at a certain point or else they'll fall into the bust category. Today we're going to be discussing four players in particular that have been viewed as busts for a while now, that are actually starting to salvage their careers a bit this season after being completely written off previously. This doesn't mean that they're starting to live up to the hype from when they got drafted necessarily, but they are at least showing noticeable improvements and carving out roles for themselves on teams after completely flaming out previously. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first former draft bust that has been doing a really good job salvaging their career this season is Dante Exum of the Dallas Mavericks. Exum was the fifth pick all the way back in the 2014 NBA Draft, so it's been quite a long time since he's been viewed as a promising young prospect, but he had actually completely flamed out of the league for a few years before making his return this season. He was originally drafted by the Utah Jazz, who thought they were getting a lockdown defender of a point guard with good size and promising playmaking talent. What they got instead was a player who could not shoot the basketball to save his life, he struggled horribly with efficiency and decision making, and did still provide good defense, but not good enough to justify the nothingness that he provided offensively. It also really set him back when he tore his ACL in his second season, causing him to miss that entire year, so the combination made it very difficult for him to ever bounce back and find his footing in the league. Injuries were a common theme from there on out. He played a few seasons in Cleveland after his time in Utah, which didn't really see any kind of improvement for him, so for the last two years, he's actually been playing overseas in Spain and Serbia before deciding to try to give the NBA one more go. The Mavericks picked him up, hoping he could help shore up their poorest defense, and honestly, I'm not sure what happened in his time overseas, but Exum has looked like a completely different player, with more confidence than ever this season. With the Mavericks, he he's become a crucial bench piece for them, locking down on defense and scoring a career-high 8.5 points per game, and he's even shooting the ball ridiculously well, making 56% of his shots and 48% of his threes, which seemed like a miracle compared to what he was shooting earlier in his career. Of course, he's only shooting about two three-pointers per game and is only really spotting up on his looks, but the fact that he's reliably making teams pay when they leave him open has been making the lot lives of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving a lot easier when he's been on the floor, and the Mavericks are actually a whopping 11.2 points better per 100 possessions with him out on the court, demonstrating how well he's been playing and how well he's been impacting the team. The next draft bust that has been successfully turning his career around this season is Dennis Smith Jr. of the Brooklyn Nets. Smith Jr. was the ninth pick by the Mavericks in the 2017 NBA Draft, which was a pretty hyped up class for the point guard position. Smith was the most explosive athlete of the bunch, and his ability to put pressure on the rim and jump out of the gym was obviously the reason that a lot of scouts and analysts at the time saw superstar potential in him. But unfortunately, that's not the way things actually went down for his career. Dennis peaked as a rookie when he was putting up 15 points per game, but like most young rookie guards, he was terribly inefficient. The issue, of course, was that he never really improved in that regard, and his questionable shot selection, his inability to convert consistently, and struggles shooting the ball made teams less and less inclined to keep featuring him in a big role. It also hurt that Luka Doncic came in the very next season and immediately became a superstar, so the Mavericks were even less inclined to prioritize him. Smith's career has been hanging on for dear life over the last few seasons, bouncing from the Knicks, to the Pistons, to the Trailblazers, and then to the Hornets, but now in Brooklyn, he seems to have finally accepted that his days as a potential star are over, and he has fully embraced becoming a specialist, and that shift in mindset is saving his career. Dennis is, without exaggeration, one of the best perimeter defenders at the point of attack in the entire NBA this season, ranking in the 98th percentile 
well in the defensive EPM metric. The Nets also give up 5.7 fewer points per 100 possessions with Smith on the court versus when he's on the bench, and looking beyond just statistics, you can see in his tape how much he hounds opposing ball handlers and makes their lives hell. Not everyone can swallow their pride and commit to being a defensive specialist to stick around, but because DSJ did that, he now actually has a bright long career ahead of him still. The next former draft bust that is managing to save their sunken career this season is Chris Dunn of the Utah Jazz. Everything that we just went over with Dennis Smith Jr. also applies almost directly to Chris Dunn. Dunn was the fifth pick in the 2016 NBA Draft with the expectations of being a floor general point guard who could command an offense and lock down on defense, and that two-way potential obviously intrigued the Timberwolves enough to select him that early on. He may not have had the explosive athleticism that Dennis Smith Jr. had, but he was a big-time playmaker at Providence in college, yet his offensive game never really developed enough to justify the top five selection. He would get traded to the Bulls after just one season in Minnesota, and then after three seasons there, where his role slowly diminished, he went from Atlanta to Portland, struggling to even get playing time. Last season, he was actually not on a team until the Jazz signed him to a 10-day contract midway through the year, and he impressed enough for them to convert it to a multi-year deal that has helped him get back on track. In Utah, he, like DSJ, has basically fully bought into becoming a specialist who locks up on defense without being asked to do that much offensively. But what makes him successful even in this reduced role is that he has improved as a shooter even if it's on much smaller volume. His shooting is about 48% from the field and 39% from three now, which are both pretty solid numbers for a guard and his smothering defense has garnered some calls for him to make the all-defense team this season. And finally, the last draft bust that has been salvaging their once-lost career this season is Jonathan Isaac of the Orlando Magic. Surprise, surprise, the trend all video long has been with players establishing themselves as elite defenders in order to make it back, and Jonathan Isaac keeps that trend going. Isaac was of course drafted because of his elite defensive potential, being taken 6th overall in the 2017 NBA Draft, but the reason why he was trending towards bust territory was simply because he couldn't stay on the court. Isaac tore his ACL in 2020 and then faced setback after setback that forced him to miss two entire seasons in a row, plus over half of last season, before finally returning to the court for 11 games before then being shut down again due to injury. Whether his body would allow him to continue his basketball career was a legitimate question, and if it did, I don't think anyone anticipated him picking right back up as an absolutely elite defensive talent. This season, he's played 44 games, and in those games, the Magic defense has been otherworldly with him on the court, allowing a ridiculous 10.1 fewer points per 100 possessions with him out there. Players also shoot a ridiculous 7.6% worse than usual with Isaac as their primary defender, which ranks amongst the best in the entire NBA. He's still not developed enough offensively to justify being a top 6 pick from back then, but as someone playing 15 minutes per game off the bench, he's a big reason why the Magic are a top 5 ranked defense this year. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about the resurgence of all these former draft busts. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.